Good afternoon, good evening, this is John Paul Wright. I'm coming to you from Tokyo, Japan. Today we're going to talk about George Lucas and him possibly coming back to help out with episode 9. I guess that sounds pretty interesting. I mean, I guess for most people this is only a positive thing. So, got the article here. Going to give it a little read and not the whole thing. I'll read some key points, stuff like that. Give some thoughts. Here we go. It sounds like Disney with their backs against the wall after the disaster of Solo, a Star Wars story, are reaching out for assistance from someone who knows Star Wars like none other. Yup, the latest word on the episode 9 rumor mill is that none other than George Lucas has been contacted to help polish up the script and contribute ideas to the upcoming finale of Disney's new trilogy. The film set to be directed by J.J. Abrams will be make or break release for the studio after the unfairly maligned Last Jedi and the fairly maligned Solo, with Disney hoping to win back fans who might consider themselves a little Star Wars out right now. Again, you know, blaming the, oh, too much Star Wars, this and that. Nope, not really. I could probably watch a hundred good Star Wars movies in a row for a hundred years. It just, you know, it's nothing I get tired of. So that's just like complete... B.S. I honestly don't know what they know by unfairly maligned Last Jedi and the fairly maligned Solo. Wasn't it Solo was kind of unfairly judged because the Last Jedi was bad and people weren't judging Solo just for Solo? I don't know. Sometimes they get confused. Apparently, the plan is to go in heavy on connections to the prequel and original trilogies, cementing the nine primary Star Wars movies as one long saga. If that's the case, then it makes sense why they're looking up to George Lucas. So, why not have done that in the first place? So now they have to connect something to the original trilogy and the prequels that has almost no connections, especially in The Last Jedi. Or it's got really weird, weak connections, like Yoda comes back and burns down the Jedi tree, Luke's this hermit coward. You know, now we have all these new characters in a nowhere, like... Alright, who's Finn connected to? I guess he's like totally new, we have Phasma, we have Rose, she's not connected to anybody. You know, I guess Rey should be, I think, but I mean, if you get my drift, it's like we got all these characters floating around that are just can't be connected very well, so it's almost like they're starting from scratch in a weird way. Then they go on to say that this is a turnaround for George, after all, his prequel trilogy has been roundly mocked for its laden dialogue and wooden performances ever since its release. But, you know, again, I really hate when people treat the trilogy as, like, one big thing that got mocked. Because Revenge of the Sith Episode 3 was, I think, received very well by pretty much everyone on every front. People who hate The Last Jedi, love The Last Jedi. It's just, like, everybody likes Episode 3. I mean, yeah, there's, there's a few people here and there who just probably can't get the taste of 1 and 2 out of their head for us who didn't like 1 and 2. And they kind of carry that into 3. But I think, you know, 3 was just... Phenomenal, and I think most people, the majority, liked it. So, like I'm saying, I don't really like when they lump them all together. To me, the prequels are one and two, and then there's three. Depending on your opinions of his talents, the resurrection of George Lucas as a creative force in the franchise might make you cheer or groan. Well, here's the thing. George Lucas is incredibly talented. What happened with the prequels, in my opinion, is it came out at a time where the digital age was just taking shape, it was in an infant form, and I think that George Lucas was pretty fascinated with computer graphics and things like that. And he kind of let that, you know, get a hold of him. He didn't realize that he should be going to his roots a little bit more. He just was, I think, fascinated with the technology. It was one of the main reasons why the prequels looked, you know, like they did in the surface. Very much CGI and kind of childish and cartoony and things like that. I don't really think it was because he made this bad decision. I think it was just more of like the era that it came out in also. Not to say he didn't make a ton of mistakes with the prequels, I'm just saying, you know, I think it was a lot about when it came out, and also, how else was he supposed to do certain things, like Coruscant. Somebody brought this up to me when I was, you know, I wasn't a prequel hater, but I was not warmed up to them for like, you know, 15 years or something, and, you know, I'd say, well, how come you use so much CGI, and someone said, how else is he going to do it? Especially Coruscant. A lot of those scenes, how else is he going to do it? Where is he going to, like, get an actual... City? and <laughs> Like, I mean, come on. There's no way to do most of that stuff. Like, Padme's ship, it probably looked better CGI than it would if you made a model. So, you know, the whole CGI thing, I think, is a little blown out of proportion. I get the criticism, but I think it's, like, a little magnified, and it shouldn't be as prominent as it is in complaints. 
I think that as long as he's in charge of the only story beats and plotting, though, with the actual writing of dialogue left to others, this could be the creative shot in the arm Star Wars Episode Nine needs. After all, they've spent so much time trying to ape the style of the original trilogy over the years, so why not just go back to the source? So, you know, I agree he did not write great dialogue in the prequels, especially 1 and 2, and even 3 to an extent, but not like they wrote the best dialogue in The Force Awakens and stuff like that. You know, Leia and Han was like complete exposition. It was absolutely terrible. It just told the audience the story. Hey, you did this, Han. You did this, Leia. We felt this about each other. I'll see you later. It was horrible. It was as bad as anything Lucas has written. Even as bad as the stuff in Episode 2 with the love story. It was just that bad. It was just complete exposition. However, I get their point. If they actually had good writers writing witty stuff, you know, kind of just taking time with the dialogue on a level he can't quite write, that's a good point. That could work, yes. Anyway, you guys let me know what you think about that down below, and I think it's pretty much good news. Like I said, I'm going to hold some hopes for this thing. We've still got quite a way to go. I've said a hundred times here, I'll say it again. I will not see this movie for money unless I know from very, very trusted sources that it's absolutely great. I'll keep an open mind. 10%. But 90%, I don't trust them anymore. Absolutely. Please consider clicking that subscribe button if you have and haven't clicked the notification bell. Click that notification bell. I got a patron. Check that out. And I will see you next time.